Uh, hi, my name is Vala. I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of Small Demons. Um, like James, I uh, basically rewrote my presentation yesterday. Uh, the original title of this was Unlocking Stories, which I wrote really before getting very deep into this and not realizing the DRM uh, implications of that if it was misread. Uh, we don't do any sort of unlocking or DRM work at Small Demons, so I thought I would change the title uh, into something a little more personal. Uh, the title is not going to make a lot of sense right now, but it will by the time I'm done. Uh, I was a uh, late presenter uh, or applicant for, uh, for the conference because I had a hard time uh, seeing how we would fit originally. Uh, specifically, I had a hard time, I was struggling, Peter, with this, um, uh, this uh, couple sentences from the uh, call for proposals uh, because I have a different way of looking at this. And uh, it goes to something that James had said a moment ago, which is that uh, I feel like a lot of what, um, what is talked about in the previous slide here, um, which we're projecting into the future as something yet to come, uh, has actually already happened and is actually a basic condition of books and specifically a basic condition of the reading and writing experience. The moment a book goes from something that uh, has been written to something that is being read. Uh, and so, um, with permission, Peter, I'm going to edit the sentences a little bit and uh, remove a few things. Uh, so this is, how, um, this is how we look at books at Small Demons. And if I, uh, uh, if I can borrow something that James said earlier in terms of making distinctions, when we, look at, when we talk about books, we talk about narrative. So we're specifically focused on uh, fiction and nonfiction narrative. And uh, I feel like fiction and nonfiction narrative has actually always been uh, networked and distributed in a very specific way, which I'll introduce in the next slide, and then sort of roll through some examples to make it real, and then show you um, how we've translated this into uh, a web service and, and hopefully um, the beginning of a business. Uh, so this is what, what I'm talking about when um, we talk about uh, books being networked and distributed. Um, there are authors who have influences upon them. There are characters that make their way into books that bear traits that come from some of those influences. Uh, there are readers who have interests, and this whole thing is this big sort of um, web that has always existed from the first time somebody wrote and read a book. It's the sort of implicit uh, deal that uh, readers and writers and characters make with each other when they engage uh, in narrative. And it's also uh, a really interesting way to build discovery of media and discovery of books uh, when you start taking these things as real objects that can be tracked. So. Um, I'll pause for a second longer on this, and then because uh, I know this is a bit more of a literal crowd than, than I might be. And uh, now I'll go into some examples uh, to make it personal. So this is a page from uh, the fifth volume of the Lou Griffin series. Uh, it's a seven book series of um, crime fiction set in New Orleans. Uh, this is the um, passage where I fell in love with the character, uh, Lou. Um, Lou is the uh, person mentioned at the beginning on the title slide. Uh, he has an on and off relationship with this woman that he's been seeing for uh, all five books up to this point, and this is the moment when they break up. And uh, it's the kind of relationship that you follow for book, you know, book after book, hoping it's going to work out, knowing it's never going to work out, and reminded me a lot of, you know, a lot of myself, but at the, in past relationships. But at this moment, when he talked about what he did when the relationship ended, uh, this is the moment I fell in love with him because um, I know doers. Uh, I, don't, I didn't know Duke Ellington's In My Solitude, but uh, I have my own song for uh, Heartbreak. It's uh, To The End by Blur. And I don't know if any of you know this song. If you don't know this song and you're feeling melancholy at some point, it's a great song. Uh, if you've uh, ended a relationship, it's a great song to play over and over and over again. <laughs> and uh, I've done it at least 16 times on, on one occasion. And, uh, and so when I read this, I knew uh, Lou and I were bonded. And uh, I would follow him through the next two, uh, two books. And if there were more books, I'd follow him further. And I'd go back to him. Um, what I didn't know, like I mentioned to you, is I didn't know um, In My Solitude. So I went out and I bought it. And it's now in my library. And I've gotten much, uh, uh, much deeper into Duke Ellington over time as a result of um, that sort of connection between um, author, his influences, character, his traits, reader, myself, and my interests. Uh, so sort of an expanding, uh, expanding world. Uh, I want to show you another example. Uh, this is 
uh, I think it's page 46 of the first volume of um, the Marseille Trilogy called Total Chaos by Jean-Claude Uh It's also a very melodramatic leading man. He has fragmented relationships with women. He drinks scotch. There's a, a, a bit of a theme here. Um, when, I, when I read this, I knew I would follow this guy anywhere because uh, I love single malt whiskey. I'm a big uh, Thelonious Monk fan. Uh, but I had never had uh, Lagavulin before. I was a Lafroy guy. I know Ed is an Irish whiskey drinker, and he is very opposed to this. He's doing a thumbs down right now. Uh, but um, uh, I mentioned I would follow the lead character, Fabio, uh, anywhere, and I did. So uh, I have this sort of conflict now between Lafroy and Lagavulin that I haven't resolved yet. Uh, but I went to Marseille. I was planning on a trip to Paris. I switched and I traveled to Marseille because the descriptions of the city were so vivid in the book. The influences on the writer, Izzo, uh, the traits of the character, uh, Fabio, and my own interests were just connected. And um, I, you know, I changed a bunch of behaviors as a result of this. So uh, at this point, I'm sort of a member of the International Brotherhood of Melodramatic Single Malt Scotch Drinkers. <laughs> and uh, I felt like I owed something to uh, Fabio and Lou. And, uh, decided to build something out of this. So myself and about a dozen other people at Small Demons, uh, we graph books. And uh, we graph them for references to people, places, and things. Uh, we subdivide them into these categories that you see here. There are actually more categories. These are just sort of high-level categories. And we use these categories as a way to drive discovery. So discovery of the things inside of books, and then discovery of other books that share those same things. Uh, I call all this stuff, when it happens together, uh, when it's all collected in one place, uh, the Storyverse, because I think Storygraph is uh, a little flat. Um, and I think it's a, it's a really uh, intriguing way of discovering media, but it's also nothing new. So I thought I'd show you a few uh, examples. Let's see if I can do this right. Great. So this is... Um, uh, this is a fan site for Nick Hornby's High Fidelity, where uh, a reader has gone through and listed every song inside the book. I, if anybody's read High Fidelity or seen the movie, you know there's a lot of pop culture references in it. There are 78 songs here. The songs are dead links. They don't, uh, they don't take you anywhere. Uh, but they're a great index of what's going on in that book. Uh, so his poison is music uh, in the way mine is uh, whiskey. Uh, this is uh, annotations for The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde. Uh, it's, as you can see, uh, chapter by chapter. I'm showing you just the first few pages. Uh, there's a lot of comic book references in here um, to Pablo's earlier presentation. I'm also a bit of a comic book geek. Uh, this is an annotation of a comic book, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Uh, you know, just all the references, uh, their context, where they go to. And then lastly, a personal favorite of mine. Uh, it's almost impossible to find the route driven in Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance anywhere. It's the most popular selling uh, philosophy book if you categorize it as philosophy in the world. And there's no good route of it anywhere. You know, you can, uh, I can click on this, it'll show you a little bit of context. Uh, but it's, um, it's not very good, uh, not very easy to follow. So uh, there are a lot of people who do this sort of action and they do it in a lot of different places. And we wanted to bring it together in one place as a way of connecting books uh, authors, uh, characters, readers, influences, uh, traits, and interests. Uh, so that's uh, Small Demons. Uh, we are in, we are um, a private in the beta army right now, like all the other startups out there. So we have a limited uh, amount of content that I'm showing you. Uh, uh, it's sort of like the trailer for the movie. Uh, all the content is real, all the data is live, but it's hugely reflective of my tastes. So you're going to see a lot of crime fiction, not much uh, nonfiction. Uh, yet. Um, the site is broken up into books and then the people, places, and things inside of them. And as you uh, scroll down from the top of the page, we do this little preview area where we show you a book, uh, a reference to uh, a cultural object inside of it, in this case a character from the movie Silence of the Lambs. And uh, as you scroll down, you get you know, your typical, you can uh, look into different books, but as you go further down, starting to extract whole experiences out of books. Uh, I think Kevin earlier showed a, a screenshot of the movies in uh, Oscar Wilde. These are all the uh, references to films inside of uh, Tales of the City series. Um, uh, in, or, in, uh, in sort of uh, in order, as you scroll over any uh, film, you get the context that it appears in the movie, so you can get the, the uh, sort of 
uh, where it happens in, I'm sorry, you get the context of where it happens in the book. And uh, this is, you know, an entire Netflix playlist based off of a, a, a book series. Uh, the next one is the reverse. If I'm interested in Jimi Hendrix as a topic, let's say, I can browse through and see all the different books we have where Jimi Hendrix is mentioned, referenced, uh, important. So uh, a way of using uh, a reader interest to go outwards and discover books. Uh, this is uh, all the music from uh, Visit from the Goon Squad. We had an early user uh, take all the songs and create playlists on RDO after, uh, after signing up for this. And what happens when you sort of select any of these items is you, you know, if we, if we go back to um, this Oscar Wow annotation, uh, this is Oscar Wow on our site. So we have uh, at the top a uh, uh, description of the book. And as you scroll down, you get all the references to all the people, places, and things inside of it. When you mouse over any object, you see, you should remember Henry. I'm going to come back to Henry in a minute. You see all these uh, uh, instances of where they appear in the book. And then as you scroll down further, all the geographical locations um, in the book. Uh, there's not a lot of mu music in this, but there's a boatload of popular culture, uh, movies, TV shows, books. Uh, all of these are sort of, are, you know, if you're, if you're like Pablo and me, who like comics, uh, when you're reading uh, uh, Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde, you want to go back to comics you've reread, like Watchmen, or maybe discover things that you didn't know about, like I'm not, you know, I don't know too much about some of the anime out there. Uh, but context breeds desire. I know I ordered uh, two comic books during uh, Pablo's presentation because I couldn't resist. Um, there's firearms, there's a uh, random miscellaneous category. Uh, selecting any of these items, I'll go back up here into the uh, people area. If I look in the groups view, the Jedi, uh, U2. If I click on U2, I'll go to a page on U2. And now U2 is the thread that opens up a whole bunch of new books. So uh, some obvious ones like High Fidelity, uh, some less obvious ones. Um, and as you browse through these books, you'll see the context where U2 appears again. And if I uh, take an interest in another book like High Fidelity, I'm now in the, in the world of High Fidelity with, again, all of its people, its places, uh, its music, all that, all that uh, music that you saw here, the 78 uh, songs mentioned are listed, uh, are listed here. Uh, and then there's just some interesting random sort of stuff. So I've been watching or re-watching Mad Men recently because my, uh, my girlfriend had never watched it before, so we're going through season, season, season. Uh, and if you watch Mad Men, you know Lucky Strike is all over Mad Men. Uh, it's a big brand, and the people behind the brand are, are in almost every show. Uh, Lucky Strike is also hugely popular in books. Um, I think you can probably tell the history of a certain period of modern fiction uh, just through Lucky Strike. And uh, you can browse around and see you know, all these different books that feature Lucky Strike. And then the interesting thing uh, for me, uh, I wonder where I was before, here we go, is that Lucky Strike leads you to Zippo, and I'm obsessed with the Zippo because the Zippo I think the Zippo has more narrative power than maybe any other object in the last hundred years or so. Uh, it's everywhere. Uh, everyone carries it. It's, uh, it has magical properties. It helps define characters. Next time I present, I'll be using one. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, it's loaded. So if I go back to sort of the other, other things we're doing, some very basic things, we're trying to make some usability improvements in discovery. Uh, this is how we present series. So whenever you uh, see a series, you get all the books that appear in that series in order below it. Um, finding books in order in series is actually kind of difficult on the web. Uh, we have you know, books mentioned in other books. All of these books are books that uh, have been discovered in other books. Uh, there's a people section. I mentioned Henry to you before. Uh, we have a module of all Henrys. These are all uh, Henrys regarding Henry found in books. Um, because I'm a comic geek, we have our Capes and Crusaders. This is a very good comic book. It's coming back. You should be excited. Miracle Man. Uh, places, locations, so restaurants and bars. Uh, Moose and Franks, I'm a huge Michael Connolly fan. We have his uh, publisher in the house. He was massively influential in this. Uh, Moose and Franks is in our intro video. Uh, we actually shot a scene in there. Uh, eating a steak and martini because if you've ever read Michael Connolly and not gone to Musso and Franks, you're missing out on a huge, uh, a huge part of the experience. Um, universities, neighborhoods. Uh, actually, I, th I thought I would show you San Francisco. So uh, San Francisco as a location to show you what place looks like uh, is mentioned in a lot of different books. 
and then we have locations within San Francisco. So all of these, uh, all of these places will take you to uh, other books that feature those places. So the Golden Gate Bridge will take you um, to books we have that are set or feature uh, the Golden Gate Bridge. It's just sort of this nonstop uh, web. So uh, I could go on uh, a bunch, but maybe I will uh, go back to the presentation. Uh, let me see. A second. Okay, so um, we are in our, I think, third week of beta now, and I've used um, a lot of Borges quotes, so I thought I would stop. Uh, Borges has an essay called Kafka and His Precursors. I'm violating what I just said, uh, but this is a modern day version of that. Uh, this is James Salas, the writer of the Lou Griffin series that I mentioned to you, talking about writing as something that is essentially timeless. It, uh, He's writing here now for those who've come before him. Um, to me, that is, uh, that is this. It's sort of this timeless bond between uh, writers and readers and characters. Um, and it's our job to sort of stitch that together. We're taking one way of stitching it together, which is object-based, uh, looking at the things that I showed you inside of books. Uh, but I'm hopeful there'll be other ways as well. Um, we'll be opening up our data via an API for folks who want to uh, mix and match and do interesting things with it. Uh, so that is, uh, that is my story. Thank you. Three questions? Sure. However... Sure. Uh, the question was, are we doing this, um, harvesting this uh, uh, electronically, or are we doing it through sort of manual methods? Uh, we started off user-generated. We had a corpus of five or 600 books that we had uh, read and extracted uh, terms from, sort of refine, refine what we were looking for and, deter and build our taxonomy. Uh, we now work directly with publishers where we get EPUB feeds, and we are using combination of uh, machine and human intelligence. Yeah, that's a, uh, the question was if the human intelligence is what does the disambiguation between um, McDonald, the, the character, and McDonald, the, um, what was it? The restaurant, yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. I, I've, I should have shown that. We have uh, a few different ways for users to contribute, but one of the main ones is that disambiguation. You know, there's, uh, depending on context, we can get to a certain degree ourselves, but uh, having users help disambiguate, having them help uh, edit and verify uh, content on the site is a huge component. And actually, you know, on our, um, uh, on the site, we have um, a contribution area where we've been getting uh, just a ton of, um, uh, a ton of interest uh, for folks to, uh, to help contribute. So it's, you know, adding new references, verifying topics, sharing photos, editing topics. The, this functionality isn't built out yet. Uh, it'll be available uh, sometime in the near future, sort of step by step. Uh, but that's a huge, huge aspect for us. And you know, I know there are, are startups in here that are further along than we are, who've benefited from the generosity of uh, the reading community. We're a few weeks into it, and we've had just tremendous uh, interest in people to do the kind of work that you just mentioned. Ed? Yep. Um, I don't know, is, is the entry point always going to be books? Uh, so Ed snuck two questions in. Uh, the first, the, that's okay. The first one was uh, um, uh, allusions, uh, when something is referring to something but not explicitly. Uh, we have a category called inspired by that we use for that. Um, it, was actually, it was actually born out of the Tales of the City series where there's a street that's very clearly uh, a street in San Francisco, but it's not named that street. 
And in order to accommodate that, we created an inspired by category. Uh, his second question was, will books always be the center or will you look to do this for music and movies and like? Uh, you know, I get that question all the time. Um, uh, I'm a hu I'm a, uh, uh, I consume media in all categories or we wouldn't have been doing this, but I just love books and what we can do with books, whether it's book books or print books or e-books, narrative. Um, uh, I think we have a lot of work to do in this area for a while. Um, it's definitely extensible and it's not anything that we've written off, but we want to stay here for, for quite some time. Yeah. Cool. Thank you.